Hello y'all, welcome again to one of my videos, Esoteric Cloud Surfer here, ready to take a ride in Esoteric Cloud. And before that, let me see which light is the best. I think it's better this way. So, you already know, you are ready to take a ride in Esoteric Cloud which is a lighter vehicle, also a less dense vehicle, and a vehicle that is vibing on a higher frequency and vibration. Then, the vehicles that we are using right now, aka our body, our emotions, and our mentalities, right? So when we jump into Esoteric Cloud, we can fly to higher, more expanded realms of reality, aka perspectives. So this video I'm bringing you today it's something that I've realized by looking at uh, um, not my natal chart, but as the Earth's natal chart with Aries, okay, being in the first house. And I noticed some things about the signs and the planets that rule those signs, okay? And it's specifically about the daytime and the nighttime of the planets, okay, the masculine day and the feminine nighttime of each planet, and what the cor corresponded signs to those sides of those planets tells us about the planet in itself. Because one part of astrology that I didn't understand at first, I didn't overstand at first, and that many people do not, is you can, I was about to say must, but that's like kind of an, an obligation, you don't need to do that, but it's taking uh, things a level further to put yourself in a star's shoes, a real star in the sky, put yourself into that perspective of that star, because that star inf influences you. That star is a mo more wise, more wider spirit, a bigger spirit than you, so it influences you. It sometimes, if you are not using the energy of that star, that star will use you as well. So it's important to know the stars outside and the stars inside. Right? Because this body and the things in it that constitute the, our physical body and emotional and mental bodies, those are minor versions of those stars that we see in the sky. Okay? Why? That's a question for another video, but it's very interesting, okay, to know, to know that. So, uh, I, I, I um, still don't know how to call this video and also it's getting a bit tough to start, okay, to talk about it, but it's about the masculine and feminine side of the planets that will uh, help you understand better the planets in itself and also this analysis of mine that I've made also lets you know the span or the wideness of the planet's tra trajectory. And the bigger the trajectory, the orb of a, 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 a planet is, it means that more things can fit into it. So it means that the spirit that created that planet is wiser and wider. It got more experience than the spirits in it, okay? A bigger thing cannot fit into a smaller thing, okay? So, let's start with a practical example. I've got with me the whiteboard today. So, let me for, uh, give, me a, give you an example to, to get things started, okay? So, we have Harry's in the first house, right? Probably... I should have drawn this first, so you don't have to watch me draw it, draw it, right? Then Taurus in the second house. Um, 
if the signs are not well drawn, I'm sorry, I don't know the signs, every sign, as in, then we'll see, forget about it. So Gemini, I don't know what Gemini is, the sign of Gemini. So I'm just writing Gemini, Cancer, I know what sign it is, in the fourth house, it also will be maybe ugly because my drawing skills are not very good. Then Leo, it's kind of like this, right? Then Virgo is like Scorpio, but with a different thing. Then Libra is kind of like this. Then Scorpio with the devil tail, if I remember. Then Capricorn, Capricorn, I don't know. So I'm just write cap, right? Then the Aquarius, I know, I'm a sun sign Aquarius. And then Pisces, yes, is like this, right? So here we have a zodiac wheel, right? Aries, the first house, Pisces, the twelfth house, and so on, okay? And The planets move through these houses, right? But they don't all make the same path. They don't all make the same tra um, trajectory, okay? For example, Mars has a wider travel than the Sun or than Mercury. So, it's like they go through all of the houses, but they don't go so much in depth. Okay, for an example, Mercury would pass only through here, while Saturn, for example, goes deeper into that same space. So they, they go through the same space, but Saturn is far further away. Saturn is more deeper. Do you know what I'm saying? So Saturn goes more into every space it goes through. Why? Because it has more experience, it is a wider spirit, because it did that travel more and more and more, okay? So, then, we can get into the actual video, but first we have to realize that yes, they go through all the same 12 houses, but some planets go more in the space than others, okay? So, Let's start with Mercury, okay? Because the Sun and the Moon are a special case, okay? So Mercury, right? Mercury rules Gemini and Virgo. It's a square, right? Mercury rules Gemini and Virgo, Mercury, right? So, the Gemini, or the third house, is the masculine side of Mercury, and the Virgo, or the sixth house, is the female, feminine side of Mercury. So, the masculine side is the daytime, and the feminine side is the nighttime in that planet, okay? So, we know that the Sun rises in that planet, in Mercury, in the third house, okay? It starts to shine, but, uh, or then, it, it is nighttime in Virgo. So, we can say that the whole day in Mercury is shorter than the rest that we are going to see, okay? So, the, that this information l lets us know that Mercury, the days on Mercury, are not that big, okay? Time goes kind of fast in Mercury, okay? But the Sun starts to rise 
on Mercury, on, on Gemini, th through Mercury's perspective. Okay, it starts to rise in Gemini. Oh no, it's our it's daytime in Gemini and it's nighttime in Virgo. Okay. And then it comes the rising and the falling signs, which Mercury doesn't have very clearly, but this is the kind the type of knowledge that lets you know things that many people don't know already. People say we don't know where Mercury is exalted, we don't know where Mercury is falling, but one thing I tell you, Mercury must fall between Cancer and Leo, because when we say falling, we, what we say is the dusk time, when the sun is falling, when the sun is setting, and when we say rising, we say the sun is rising Still, it's not still daytime, it's still rising, okay? Or when we say exalted, all right? It's when it starts to rise, because it's exalted. So, if the days, the Mercury days, is between Gemini, its day side, and Virgo, its night side, the fall or the sun setting must be before Virgo, because Virgo is already the night side, right? So, it has to be either Virgo, Cancer or Leo, in my personal opinion, okay? I know it, that's not a word, personal opinion, because your opinion is already yours, so it, you don't need to say personal. To me, Mercury falls in Leo. Okay, and to me it rises in Aquarius. Okay, that do you see what I'm saying? And also, this lets us know that the um, the that the uh, Mercury span is small. It's only between Gemini and Virgo, and it lets us know that Gem that Mercury spins fast. It is a fast planet. It it is a young a young planet, and that. It spins from the left to the right, okay? It spins from the left to the right, or, yes, it spins, because we, as being, the Earth spins to the left, so the Sun rises on the east, because we spin to the left, because, because the Sun is not actually rising, it's just a perception, but we spin to the left, so the Sun rises on the east, the sun rises here in, yeah, 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 okay? We can say that Mercury spins to the left, all right? Then, Venus, okay? Let's look at the case of Venus. Venus rules Taurus and Libra, right? So that's like a misconjunction. So, to Venus, right, the daytime in Venus starts in Libra, and the night, or, the, it starts in Libra, and the nighttime starts in Taurus, right, and then Venus is exalted in Pisces, right, and it descends in Virgo, and that lets us know Okay, that Venus is spinning from Taurus to Libra. Okay, because the okay, no, from Taurus to Libra, Venus actually spins the other way around that Gemini. Okay, why? Because Venus is exalted in Pisces, so the, the sun is rising in Pisces or in the 12th house, through Venus perspective. So the day is beginning in Pisces, and then it's full day when it's Libra. And then the night for Venus, or the fall, or the, the setting of the sun for Venus, starts in Virgo, and then by Taurus it's already night time. Okay? So we, we see here, in comparison to Mercury, the day and the night in Venus, it's, it's much bigger, 
it's not just Leo and Cancer, right? It's it's about one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four. Three spaces for the night, three spaces for the day. If I'm not one, two, three, four. No, it's the same actually. One, two, day. One, two, three. Okay, no, it's actually the days are bigger than the nights. In Mercury, the nights are bigger than the days, as we could see, because Mercury, okay, Mercury, the night time was in Virgo, right? And the daytime only starts, the sun only starts to rise in Aquarius, right? So it's a whole time before the sun starts to rise. But then in Mercury, the sun, it's daytime in Gemini, but then it's all, it's daytime by Virgo. So the sun starts to fall in Leo, so it's, it's, it's really short. The days in Mercury, it's really short, okay? That lets us know that Mercury is still learning its individuality. Mercury is still learning about the external realm. And what, which planets do Mercury rule? Gemini and Virgo, external uh, signs. And which alignment do Gemini and Virgo do? A square. So Gemini is learning its external part. Okay, that's why it's night time is longer, because he already knows that. And it's daytime is shorter, because it's, it's a new experience to it, right? And then Venus, the day starts in Libra, right? Then it's, no, the day or the sun rises in Pisces, then it's morning, then it's like daytime strong, like noon or near noon. Libra, then the sun starts to fall, starts to, oh yeah, so it's pretty balanced, it's pretty balanced because the night side, yeah, the nights are, are also short in, in Venus, okay, because the night time of Venus is Taurus, no, no, they are actually quite long because the sun starts to set in Virgo and then we have Leo, Cancer, Gemini and then it's like midnight Taurus, okay? So the evening is long in Venus but the night time is short because Venus is also about external, okay? Venus... No, 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 Venus... Yeah, Venus is about the external, okay? She's not, she is not learning the external part. She is more of the external part, okay? Because it rules Libra and Taurus. Also, external signs, air signs, air and earth signs, right? So, the day in Venus starts in Libra. And, uh, <coughs> or, no, no, I'm always confusing because... When the sign where a planet is exalted is when the sun is rising over there, when life is coming. So the day starts in Pisces or in the 12th house for Venus, but it's the sun, it's only at its highest point in Libra. And then, the, and then it starts to fall right after in Virgo. And that, that lets us know that Venus is rotating from Libra to Taurus, from Libra to Taurus, while Gemini was rotating from Gemini, while Mercury was rotating from Gemini to Virgo. So they are spinning in opposite, in opposite um, directions, okay? Because the sun rises, or the, or the, the sun, or we, we can tell the movement of a body of water, aka a planet, from where the sun is rising. So the sun rises, or it's daytime in Libra, and then it's nighttime in Taurus. If it was the other way around, if it was daytime in Taurus for Venus, it would be, it would be spinning in the same way as Mercury. Do you see what I'm saying? S just to get things sure here, okay? Because as we go further, 
I will like do some corrections, but this this is very personal. This is something that I've realized, so there will be some mistakes or some things that I cannot express clearly enough, but I'll do my best, okay? So let's take the, the case of Mars next, right? Mars rules Aries and Scorpio. Okay, my circle is very bad designed. Okay, because it looks like Aries and Scorpio are opposing each other, which they are not. But, well, so, and Mars, wait, and Mars is exalted in Cap and falls in Cancer. Right? So Mars is spinning in the opposite direction as Venus because they are they are complementary. They are they are in the same frequency and vibration. Why? Because both of the signs they rule are misconjuncting. Venus, Ma, uh, Venus, Taurus and Libra in conjunct, misunderstanding, Mars, Scorpio and Aries. They mis they misconjunct as well. Right, so they are and Venus and Mars are like complementing energies. One rules fire and water, the other rules air and earth. Okay, so we can say that Venus is a higher masculine part of Mars, and Mars is a higher masculine part of Venus. In some way, we can we can say that it's true. So the day the sun starts to rise in Mars, in the 10th house. Then it's daytime in Aries. Then the sun starts to set in Cancer, and then it's nighttime in Scorpio. So Mars rotates to that, or the, uh, the sun path in Mars rotates to that way. And when I say the sun, I'm not saying the, the same sun as we have, because the sun is not the center of the solar system, okay? It's actually Saturn, all right? Or, or, okay, because then this goes into some mis-truth and mis, uh, misconjunctions, misunderstandings, because the center, it's always you, in this case, Earth, to our perspective. Because we are looking at the universe, so we are the center, okay? That's another misconception, thinking that the sun or something else is the center. No, we are the center. And it's a Saturnian, not heliocentric model, because we are all inside of Saturn, as, we'll, as we, we, you will see, okay? So the sun to us might not be the same sun to Mars. Maybe it's Venus, okay? Because a sun, to be a day in, the, in a certain planet, two planets, two body of waters, must be together. It's not one planet here, shining light to here. No, it's when they come together, when they interact, that friction creates temperature and then creates light. It's not, oh, I'm giving light, and Earth here, oh, I, I, I ain't no light. I have no light. No, sun doesn't have light as well, but when they come together, they can create light. How do you exist? Your mother and father came together. Your father didn't shoot his sperm into your mother from miles and miles away. But that's another story as well. So the start or the light, the life in Mars starts to set in Cancer. And then by Scorpio, it's nighttime. Okay? So this is the, the days in Mars are like this. And then we can go way deeper into this. And like, oh, if in Mars the sun starts to rise in Capricorn, this will be the most general personality in Mars. Here in Earth is Aries, because Aries is the first house to, to, to Earth. So in Mars, if you are born in Mars, the first house in Mars is Capricorn, is the 10th house, okay? You see what I'm saying? Because the sun rises in, in, the, in the 10th house, in our perspective 10th house. Here the sun rises in Aries, in the first house, in the east, okay? 
and everybody here is very personal takes everybody here takes things very personal that's the most general personality general okay so mars rotates from capricorn to aries to the right because the sun goes from yeah mars rotates to the right but i, I might be wrong in that aspect i'm just showing you what i have noticed okay Feel free to comment your personal opinion about this. So the Virgo, no, Venus and Mars, they are in the same frequency and vibration because even the days and the nights have the same length, I think. No, actually, Mars as Mars is more experienced than Venus, okay? Because the sun rises in Capricorn, then one, two, three, four, five, five houses, five spaces, one hundred and fifty degrees of sunlight, then starts to fall in one, two, three. Yeah, I'm noticing that the daytime is bigger in these planets. Okay, but let's see, let's continue. Then we have Jupiter, okay? Jupiter, the masculine side of Jupiter is... Oh, I forgot one sign, I forgot Sagittarius. That's why the wheel is ugly. No, not because I also can draw very well. I missed, that's why the knights and the days are not heading up. I'm missing one house. I'm missing one space in the sky. The fucking Sagis. Emperor Pisces. Virgo does that, does that weird thing. Yeah. The... Okay, then it it might change the calculus of the nighttime and daytime. So let's see with Mars. Mars, uh, the sun rises in Capricorn. So it's one, one, two, three, four, five, six, six houses of sunlight in Mars, and then one, two, three, four, five, six houses of nighttime in Mars. Okay. While in Venus, it's one, two, three, four, five, six of, yeah, it's balanced. But in Gemini, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, six as well. Yeah, this makes sense. Now this makes sense. Okay, so... I was missing one piece of the puzzle, all right? So what I said about Mercury is still ex learning his external side, it's true, but not because the days are longer over there, okay? And it makes sense. And if people, if people ask you where Mercury is exalted, you say Aquarius. If people ask you where, where Mercury is falling, you say Leo, because uh, it makes sense, Mercury, rises in Aquarius, right? Then it's one, two, three, four, five, six daytimes zones and then falls in Leo and then nighttime in Virgo and it's one, two, three, four, five, six because the Le the falling must be in between Gemini and Virgo because that's like the... Um, the moments that we can use to track, okay? Because astrology is a map, okay? Uh, it can be a map for your spirit, spiritually, or it can be used as a map, literally, like the discovers people from Portugal and people who were sailing the sea, they use the stars as a reference, as a guiding system. And we, we can use that spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. It's a map. 
So we are using what we can see to explain things that we can see. I can go to Mercury right now with this physical body. I can go with, with a mental body and when I die, I can go there. But right now, I can go to Mercury and say, hey, shit is like this over there. But through the things that we can see or the things through thoughts, I can at least give it a shot and try to understand. Okay, so if everybody asks you, Mercury rises in Aquarius and falls in Leo. Okay, so next, Jupiter. Jupiter, daytime of Jupiter is, is uh, Sag and nighttime of Jupiter is Pisces. And Jupiter rises in Cancer and falls in Capricorn. Okay, so Jupiter is learning about internal shit. Okay, so the sun rises in Cancer, in Jupiter, the sun rises in Cancer, then it goes all the way up to here, the night, the day side, so days are very long, I'm sorry, in Jupiter, because it takes a, a whole time to the, for the sun to, re, to reach its highest point. Okay, so the days are very long, and then they start to, the sun starts to fall right over, okay? And then the nights are short. The nights are kind of short, or the nights reach its, its, its highest moment very quickly, because the sun starts to set in Capricorn, and then it's nighttime in Pisces, right over, okay? So, the trajectory of Jupiter is very big. It's from this side to this side. Oh, not, not Aquarius, Pisces. Shit. <laughs> and now that I'm looking at this shit, this, this, this really looks like uh, trigonometry classes from math in school, okay? Because we were using, studying the circle and shit, that was astrology, but they took it all away, okay? So, to here... Hmm? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's to there, okay? So the days are from Sedge to Pisces, okay? Highest sunlight, highest moonlight, as you can say. So this, this, this is like the spaces that Jupiter knows the best. This is like the spaces where Jupiter is very strong, okay? And then Jupiter is not very strong in Aquarius and Capricorn, okay? So Jupiter, the sun rises in Cancer. So Jupiter moves this way around, okay? Jupiter moves this way around because the sun rises in Cancer. It's high in Sag. It it starts to set in Capricorn, and it's night time by Pisces. Okay, so yeah, the nights and the days are the same time. Okay, but it takes more time for the sun to rise in Jupiter then for the night to fall, okay? And then we go to Saturn. Saturn is one of the best examples to explain this. Keep in mind, as, I, as while I'm sharing, sharing with you, I'll, I'm also learning about my own vision, about my own dream, about my own imagination, as I'm expressing it to you, I'm learning as well. Why? Because I have developed a Jupiter in Aquarius for myself. So when I share this into a social media or into a large group, I experiencing it. I'm learning as well. So Saturn, the nighttime of Saturn is Capricorn. And the daytime of Saturn is Aquarius. All right. And Saturn falls in Aries and rises in Libra, okay, yes, yes, so, okay, 
So I just froze because I was learning from my own experience. So night, daytime of Saturn, Aquarius. Daytime, nighttime, Capricorn. So the sun in Aquarius, in uh, the days in Saturn are huge, are the biggest days because the sun, the day goes from here all the way through Capricorn. Okay? But the thing is that I just realized supposedly the sun falls in Aries and rises in Libra. Right, in, 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 in Saturn. So, it has to be the other way around. The sun rises and falls. Mm, that, this is a tricky one. This one does, doesn't fit into my... Because the, uh, all the other ones do pretty well. I'm not wrong. Saturn rises or is exalted in Libra and falls in Aries. But if things were switched, it would make sense as well. Because day, because the night time, okay, night time, Capricorn, but the sun rises in Libra, so it makes no sense here. Okay, I will think this one through. Okay, but what this tells us is that Saturn has the most, or it has the biggest travel in our system beside Pluto, Neptune and Uranus, right? Because a whole day for Saturn is like a year to us, okay? Almost, because this, from, from day to night, it goes through all the spaces into our, in, in our perspective. So, this lets us know that we are inside Saturn. Because this is the orbit of Saturn. Then the orbit of Jupiter is a bit small, but it, it's in between Sag and Pisces, right? Then the orbits of Mars and Venus are, are look-alike. One, do you see? In Saturn, it's all the way Aquarius through Capricorn. Jupiter is... Sedge through Pisces. So they are almost in the same frequency and vibration, but one is spinning in one way and the other is spin spinning in the other way. Then Venus is from Libra to Taurus and Mars is from Aries to Scorpio. It's, the, it's almost the same size, but one is f it's going from masculine f to feminine in that way and Mars is going to that way. So they are like complementary parts to each other. Then we have Mercury, which is the smallest one. It's just between Gemini and Virgo. It's the smallest root. It's, or it goes the least into those spaces. It's still young. And then we have the Sun and the Moon, which they only rule one sign. That means that they are the youngest uh, or like the sun is the youngest because the moon is just a reflection of the sun. Okay? And we can say that Venus and Jupiter are just reflections of Mars and Saturn. But they still hold their influence, right? So, the sun... Uh, and in the esoteric realm, everything is a reflection. Okay? So, not too much to stress over there. So... The sun and the moon, the moon rules Cancer and the sun rules Leo. It's very near, it's very proximate. 
it's a, in a near vis vicinity. That means that the sun and the moon share the same space and the same degree of expansion and the experience, okay? So they are the only ones that only rule one sign. Mercury rules two, Venus rules two, Mars rules two, Jupiter rules two, and Saturn rules two. So that means that the sun and the moon are still looking for their external, their, their um, counterpart, okay? The sun rules Leo, so it, the sun has a masculine part, but it's looking for a female part, okay? And the thing is, the sun and the moon one day will be the same thing, okay? They will be the new Mercury. That's why Mercury doesn't have a counterpart, Jupiter and Saturn, Venus and Mars, Jupiter, Sun and Moon. The Sun and Moon will come together and they will become the pair to Jupiter. Right? And we know that the Sun doesn't like Saturn. Okay? The Sun doesn't like Saturn because the Sun is learning what Saturn already knows. And the Sun has a more prideful nature, so the Sun doesn't want to show that it's already that is learning from somebody who is wiser, okay? And Saturn is not about image. Saturn is about status, what you can do, not what you can show, not how others see you. It's about more about reality, and the sun is about is more about light. And I believe that when the sun and the moon come together, the sun will be the exact opposite op opposite the exact opposition to Saturn. Saturn will be daytime. Saturn is daytime Aquarius, nighttime Capricorn. And the Sun will be daytime Leo, nighttime uh, Cancer. So it will be a very close dominance, very close day and night sides that will take them to travel all over the space in depth because that's why you take longer to do the same 12 houses, why the Saturn takes longer than the Sun? Because Saturn goes more, it reaches far out, further out than the Sun. The Sun goes like through here, and Saturn comes like through here, okay? So the Sun will be like Saturn, very big, very wise, but in the exactly opposite nature, natures. The day sign of so the sun opposes the day sign of Saturn and the night side of the sun opposes the night side of Saturn. Okay? So, this was the video for today. I know it wasn't very clear. It was just me exp exp exploring my personal view. my Something that I've realized, like how Venus and Mars, they all rule almost the same signs. Okay, like they rule Mars rules Aries, Venus rules Taurus, Mars rules Scorpio, Venus rules Libra. It's really close. It's really really close, but they are inverted. So that tells me they are in the same frequency and vibration. They are in the same space. They are in the same status of expansion and contraction. Okay, they have same levels of wisdom, but in different areas. Mars cares about internal shit. Venus cares about external shit. And then we have the case of Jupiter. Jupiter, night side, day side. Saturn, night side, day side. It's, a, it's almost the same size, okay? Like Mars has a bigger daytime than Venus, okay? Yeah, I think we, we can simplify this if we forget a little bit about the rising and the about the ex uh, exaltment and the falling okay because then i was thinking if the sun is rising is it already daytime or it's in between okay but we can see mars the daytime of mars goes through aries to scorpio the daytime of libra is the daytime of venus is libra to Taurus, the daytime of Gemini, of 
Mercury is Gemini to Virgo. So it's a smaller day, it's a smaller span. So Mercury spins faster, it has smaller days. Venus spins faster than Mars, it has smaller days than Mars. Mars it's from Aries to Scorpio, but Jupiter is from Sag to Pisces. So Jupiter is bigger, it has a bigger route, it, it takes more time to spin, so the days are longer. And then Saturn is from Aquarius to Capricorn. So it, the, the days in Saturn are the larger or, uh, on our system, because for it, it starts in Aquarius and it ends in Capricorn, all right? And it's always inverting, okay? Venus, Libra to Taurus, then Mars, Aries to Scorpio, then Jupiter from here to there, and then Saturn from there to there. Okay, so Venus is there, there. Mars is there, here. Jupiter is here, here. And uh, Saturn is here, here. So it's always changing the flow or the direction of movement. Okay? And then we have Mercury, which is still waiting for its counterpart, which will be the Sun. Okay? It, it will be the Sun, it will be the counterpart to Mercury. All right? So this helps you understand more about the masculine and feminine parts of each planet. It helps you know why we are all inside of Saturn, because Saturn has the biggest space, Saturn has the biggest route, has the biggest orb, and the biggest thing can fit inside the smaller. Only the small things can go into the big things. So every planet, including the Earth, what we call Earth, is inside of Saturn. Okay? So it's a Saturnian model, not heliocentric, not geocentric model, it's a Saturnian model, because we live inside of Saturn. Saturn receives information from outside of the system first, and then that information is filtered through Jupiter, Mars, Venus, Mercury and the Sun, and then only, and Moon, and then it only reaches us after all of that. That's why also astrology can help you be aware, uh, uh, ahead of the waves, ahead of the times, because you are connected to the filters itself. You don't receive the energy, you don't receive the leftovers. You know when shit is being processed in planet, in the other planets. But that's going a little deeper. So I hope this was clear. It's a very big video. So I think I will make a specific one for each planet. But this one was the first thought. This one was the masterpiece that I've created inside, now I'm expressing to you. This also helps you, uh, help me understand that um, Mercury falls in Leo, because falling, it means the sun is setting, the life is ending in that planet. So if, if the trajectory of Gemini is in between, of Mercury is in between Gemini and Virgo, the daytime is Gemini and the ninth time in Virgo, the falling of the sun must be in between. It has to be in between. Otherwise, how it gets night in Mercury without a sunset? Do you see? Day, Gemini, night, Virgo. The sunset must be in between. And I think it's Leo. Because before I thought the rising or the exaltment of Mercury was in Aquarius, because it's information, but individually, through your with your personal stamp and i noticed that every exaltation and falling oppose each other right saturn is exalted in libra falls in aries uh, virgo is exalted in pisces falls in virgo jupiter is exalted in cancer falls in capricorn it always balanced like that so this mapping this perspective confirmed a perspective that, that i already had that uh, um, Mercury will, will be exalt, exalted in Aquarius. Okay, it helped me confirm that because I found out where Mercury falls, which is in Leo. Okay, and it helps you know 
the direction the planets are spinning in that lets you know if they are more masculine or more feminine. But then I got confused because we spin to the left because the sun rises or the sun goes from the left to the right, from east to west, okay? So if a planet spins the other way around, because we go from Aries to Libra as well, or east to west, but Venus goes from Libra to Taurus, so Libra goes, Libra goes from west to east, so, Libra, uh, so Venus spins to the right, Mars spins to the left, Jupiter spins to the right, Jupiter spins, uh, Saturn spins to the left. So a, a, a planet that spins to the left, like ourself, cares, it, it, cares, it cares more about external or externalizing or learning from the outside world. Or it's learning to do that. It's, it's experiencing that now. So it's learning to do that. Okay. So by default, it already know the counterpart. Because Venus is actually masculine, so it's learning how to spin to the right. Because Venus rules Libra and Taurus, masculine signs. Mars rules Aries and Scorpio, feminine signs, but it's spinning to the left. So Mars is learning how to be more masculine, or to not, to not take things so personally. Don't hold in too much, because being feminine is holding in. Also, knowing all of these helps you know where those planets hold in or express more things, okay? Like Saturn holds in more in Capricorn. It, it's more personal to Saturn, things that deal with status, how others you see, if you are stable or not, things like that. But yeah, infinitely, I will make smaller videos, okay? Because this one is too big and it might be a bit um, heavy for y'all and I can't explain things very well because I'm always rushing myself so thank you anyway for watching remember to check my link tree down below check out Darius page as well shout out to Dodo the pilot man shout out to every real soul group member who he's changing the world right now with me and the guys and I hope this was helpful to you I hope you had fun with me exploring my own personal perspectives and findings. So until the next time, as a very cloud surfer, surfing out, have a nice day.